here we have a question asking us about exponents. So let's take a look at the left question first. And it's pretty straightforward. What does 4 to the power of 2 mean? Well, that just means it's 4 times 4 divided by negative 3, which is equal to 16 over negative 3, which is equal to negative 16 over 3. If the negative in the denominator or numerator, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the whole fraction is negative. Now let's take a look at our right-hand side question. So what does the exponent mean here? Well, a couple things. Notice that the negative sign is outside the exponent. So this is like writing negative 1 multiplied by 5 over 4 to the power of 3. And that's like writing negative 1 multiplied by 5 over 4 times 5 over 4 times 5 over 4. I could rewrite this in another way. I could say, oh, well, this is like negative 1 multiplied by 5 to the power of 3 divided by 4 to the power of 3. Right, so they all mean the same thing. What's the answer going to be? It's negative 1 or negative 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, that's 64. And you know, I basically have negative 125 over 64. Here we are on Alex, and we have the same question that we saw in my slides. And so we evaluated the exponents, and then we wrote it as fractions. So the first one, the answer was negative 16 over 3. And the second question was negative 125 over 64. Let's see if we've got the right answer. And we do. We will look at some more difficult exponent questions in the later topics. Uh, but for now, this is the basics. Our last question, I'm going to let you answer. And so if you look at the slide in front of me, the question says, if we divide a real number by 0, so that's something like 5 divided by 0, or 2 divided by 0, or 3 divided by 0. What happens? Can we do this? And if we can do this, uh, can, uh, what's the answer? And so this is a, a multiple choice type question. And so the first option is if we divide a real number by 0, there is no problem. Uh, mathematicians frequently divide by 0. The next option is that the universe will cease to exist. So uh, that would cause some sort of reverse Big Bang, and that would be the, the end of the universe as we know it. The answer, any number divided by 0, is always equal to infinity. And our last option is, if we divide a real number by 0, the answer is unknown. If you want to keep thinking about it, why don't you hit pause, and then I'll walk you through the solution. So is A the correct answer? Well, no. A is not the correct answer. Uh, there is a problem, and mathematicians do not frequently divide by zero. Well, the universe ceased to exist. Well, no, that's not a very good uh, answer. Uh, 
you know, if we write down 5 divided by 0, uh, the universe doesn't come to an end. The answer is always infinity. This is a tempting solution. Uh, however, infinity is not a number. So it is not an appropriate solution. Infinity is a concept, not a number. If we divide a real number by zero, the answer is unknown. We do not know what the answer is. Essentially, we don't know. Uh, so if you're going to divide any number by zero, uh, mathematicians say, we don't know what the answer to that is, and so you can never do it, because if you do it, we won't have an answer for you. Uh, we do not know that some uh, real number divided by zero uh, produces infinity. Uh, we, we don't know what it produces. So why am I asking you this question? Because uh, as we'll see, and some of the future questions and future topics that come up, uh, you must never divide by zero. If you must divide by zero to get an answer, then we say that there is no solution. There is no solution. So this is going to come up in some future topics. You might wonder why? And I'm trying to fill that in for you right here. We don't know what a real number divided by zero is equal to. So that does it for topic one. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, remember, there are still a lot of concepts in topic one, in the real number line, that I didn't cover. And I think you're better off trying to learn those on your own. And if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to me or take advantage of any other resources that are currently available. Um, I would certainly be glad to help you. Now, let me show you how to review this topic and how to get more uh, assistance on this topic in Alex. So here I am on Alex. I've got uh, an account that I've created where a certain number of topics uh, I've mastered through the knowledge check. One thing you can do to get extra practice is you can just click on start my path and uh, Alex will start asking you questions uh, presumably in order of the topics it felt that you did not show sufficient mastery of when you completed that knowledge check. Now you do have uh, some more control uh, over what you want to learn and so if I go up to the top left corner there are those three horizontal bars. I'll click on that and when I cl click on that I get a whole bunch of options here and I'm just going to explain uh, the first two options. If you want to learn a new topic you can click on learn and if I click this down menu here you can actually go along and pick what you want to learn and you can even pick the topic so for example I can click on real numbers and before uh, it lets me go too much further, it wants me to master applying the percent equation. And, but there could be also be other options off to the right. And let me just see if I go, for example, here in another topic, there are more than one option. So it doesn't want me to move on until I get this one correct, but that's not always going to be the case. Now, what if you've mastered a topic, but you start realizing that, yeah, you got that question right on the knowledge check, but you know, do I really, do I really understand it? Maybe, maybe a little more practice and I can really nail it and really uh, fully master that topic. Uh, if you go to review and click on review, again, you can, now you can review the topics that you've mastered. And so if I click that down arrow, so this comes up, I go up to here where it says review. So it's reviewing all the topics. I click on real numbers and now I can review the questions that I got right. And you see it's got a little crown icon, or at least I think it's a crown icon, and it says mastered. So you can see that you've mastered that topic. Uh, 
So go to work, uh, see what you can do. If you have any trouble, please reach out to me or check some of the walkthroughs and the, and the help that's available on Moodle and the Alex website.